ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد we begin as always by praising Allah tabarak wa ta'ala with praises and exaltations that only he is worthy of we begin by sending his salawat and his salamat his blessings and his peace upon the last and final messenger Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallam wa ba'd then alhamdulillah ta'ala to continue where we left off yesterday we were speaking on the affair of that min ashrat as-sa'a from the signs of the day of judgment the establishment of the hour is that knowledge will become limited in the world and abundantly the people will be ignorant regarding the affairs of the deen we mentioned allahu yubarik fikum that this is an affair that if we look back to the books uh, that mention these ahadith or the explanation of these ahadith you find that each one of these uh, 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 each one of these scholars they mentioned that in their time in their time they had begun to see the decrease of knowledge and the increase of ignorance amongst the people we mentioned that the athar of anas ibn malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu when he said la uhaddithanakum haditha la yu la yuhaddithukum ahadun ba'di i'm going to mention to you a hadith that no one after me is going to mention to you that some of the muhaddithun they mention that it may be the reason that anas ibn malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he mentioned this is because what he saw in his time what he saw in his time from knowledge going away in the increase of ignorance all of this we mention allahu yubarik fikum ya ayyuhal ikhwan wa akhawat is in it is a reminder for each and every one of us to give importance to learning our religion and learning our religion not in the fact of just sitting in a class or taking some time but learning our religion in an orderly in a structured manner you find that the scholars giving importance to not only attending the lessons but attending the lessons in a structured manner with notebooks with pens writing down our knowledge going home and repeating it and reviewing it and going into uh, other notebooks and writing it into other notebooks a sheikh al uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala he says he says hadha al kalam yanbaghi an yakuna wasiyatan likulli talib ilm 
ان يتعاهد ما من الله به عليهم من العلم بالمراجعه والمذاكره والعمل ايضا he says that this speech that we are bringing these ahadith that we are mentioning it is befitting that we should take that as an advice we should take that as an affair for ourselves for every student of knowledge ان يتعاهد ما من الله به عليه من العلم بالمراجعه والمذاكره والعمل ايضا that whatever allah ta'ala has given to us from knowledge that we should reassure that that we should establish that by reviewing it by going through that knowledge again by acting upon that knowledge ولهذا قال بعضهم قيد العلم بالعمل وقال بعضهم قيدوه بالكتاب وكلاهما صحيح he said this is why some of the scholars they said pairing together knowledge with action yani it's not sufficient that a person gains knowledge and then walam ya'mal bihi he does not act upon it then pairing it with writing down knowledge writing it down into notebooks writing it down in our books and then making muraji'a of that going back and reviewing that it's mentioned that from that from the uh intentions that a person should have when they are seeking knowledge there are particular intentions that a person needs to have when they are seeking knowledge from that al ikhlas lillah ta'ala seeking sincerity to allah jalla jalaluhu at taqarrub ila allah ta'ala drawing closer to allah ta'ala but from that is hifdud din the maintaining of the religion the protecting of the religion when zakaria alayhi salatu was salam made dua to allah tabarak wa ta'ala allah ta'ala he says ذكر رحمة ربك عبده زكريا إذ نادى ربه نداء خفيا قال يا ربي إني وهن العظم مني واشتعل الرأس شيبا ولم أكن بدعائك ربي شقيا وإني خفت الموالي من ورائي وكانت امرأة عاقرة فهب لي من لدنك وليا يرثني ويرث من آل يعقوب وجعله ربي رضيا Zakari alayhi salatu was salam the beginning of surah maryam allah ta'ala he mentions zikru rahmati rabbika abdahu zakariya the mention of the mercy of your lord upon his servant zakariya id nada rabbahu nidaan khafiya when he called upon his lord with a secret calling qala rabbi inni wa hana al'azm minni wa ashta'al ar-ra's shayba wa lam akun bi du'aika rabbi shaqiya Oh my lord my my bones have become have grown feeble my hair has gone white has gone gray and i have never been i have never remained unblessed in my dua to you oh my lord wa inni khiftu al mawali wa inni khiftu al mawali min wara'i wa kanat imra'ati aqira fa hab li min ladunka waliya he said i fear for my family i fear for my family after me and my my wife wa kanat imra'ati aqira she can no longer give birth she is old in age fa hab li min ladunka waliya give me from your own self a wali yani someone to inherit from me yarithuni yarithuni that he may inherit from me wa yarithu min ali yaqub وَيَرِثُ مِنْ آلِ يَعْقُوبِ and that he may inherit from the 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 family of Yaqub Yaqub عليه الصلاة والسلام يعني the son of Ishaq the son of Ibrahim عليه الصلاة والسلام so here and Zakaria عليه الصلاة والسلام was from the lineage of Yaqub عليه الصلاة والسلام so when he says يَرِثُ مِنْ inherit from me وَمِنْ آلِ يَعْقُوبِ and from the children of Yaqub It is clear in this ayah that the indication is what inherit from me my wealth inherit from me my land la because yaqub alayhi salatu wassalam had already passed 
Yaqub had already passed. So hence, inheriting from the children of Yaqub, from the family of Yaqub, meaning what? Inherit the religion of Yaqub Why did he want to have a son? Why did he want to have Yahya? Allah Ta'ala blessed him with Yahya, he made dua for Yahya. Why? Yarithuni. Wa yarithu min ali Yaqub That he may inherit from me my religion the knowledge of my religion. And I may give to him the knowledge of this religion. And the knowledge of the religion of Ya'qub alayhi salatu wasalam, yarithum ni wa yarithum min ali Ya'qub. So, to intend when seeking knowledge, that we want to protect the religion. We want to be counted amongst those whom have protected the religion and have passed it on generation after generation after generation. As time goes on, this characteristic will become uh, 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 will become less and less amongst the people. And this is what we mentioned yesterday. We return back to the, the statement. We return back to the statement of Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah ta'ala When he says ثُمَّ إِنَّ الرَّغَبَاتِ فَتَرَتْ فِي الْعِلْمِ Yani the people, their drive to seek knowledge فَتَرَتْ It became less فَصَارَ صَاحِبُ الْحَدِيثِ يَقْتَصِرُ عَلَى عَلَى مَا عَلَى إِسْنَادُهُ وَيُعْرِضْ عَنِ الْفِقْهِ And you saw the people, they began to يعني have تخصص They would go into this fund but they would specialize themselves in this affair, but not read the affairs and not go into the other affairs. So someone may go into ilm al-rijal and ilm al-hadith, but not go into fiqh and usul al-fiqh. Someone may specialize in, in lugha, but not go past that aspect. Someone may specialize in tafsir, but not go past that. So they became specialized in, in particular funun, in, par, uh, uh, in particular sciences of the Qur'an. Where this was not the case amongst the Sahaba, this was not the case amongst the earliest of scholars. Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah ta'ala, he then mentions one other point. And he says, ثُمَّ لَهُ رَفْعٌ مِنْ هَيْثِ الْمَعْنَى Then there is a metaphorical, right? A, a removal of knowledge and meaning. We're going to come to some ahadith regarding this. وَهُوَ أَنَّ إِذَا وَجَدْنَا الْعَالِمَ الْمُتَّقِنَا قَدْ مَالَ إِلَى الدُّنْيَا وَتَشَاغَلَ بِخِدْمَةِ السَّرَاطِينَ وَتَرَدُّدِ إِلَيْهِمْ غَيْرْ آمُرٍ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلَا نَاهٍ لَهُمْ عَنْ مُنْكَرٍ Now you may find that there are from those that are scholars, but مَالَ إِلَى الدُّنْيَا They begin to turn towards the dunya. They begin to turn towards increasing themselves in affairs of the dunya, increasing themselves in the wealth of the dunya, they attach themselves to the salateen, yani to the rulers, because of what is there from power and money and prestige and honor. غَيْرُ آمِنٍ بالمعروف, Not ordering what is good. غَيْرْ نَاهِينَ عَنِ المنكر, Not prohibiting what is evil. وَعَكَفَ عَلَى اللذات, And they become attached to al-ladhat, right? Al-ladhat, I mean that which is al-ladha, uh, 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 that which is sweet, right? So they become attached to uh, 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 the affairs that bring them happiness. Yeah, yeah subhanAllah, I'm forgetting the word for it. Um, luxuries. They become attached to those affairs. Warubbama. مَزَدَهَا بِحَرَامٍ وَرُبَّمَا they, It may be that they also mix it with what is haram. كَلُبْسِ الْحَرِيرِ Such as wearing of silk. لَمْ يَبْقِ لِعِلْمِهِ نُورٌ عِنْدَ الْمَقْتَبِسِ فَصَارَ كَالطَّبِيبِ الْمُخَلِّتِ لَا يَكَادُ يُقْبَلْ قَوْلُهُ فِي الْحِمْيَةِ فَمَاتَ الْعِلْمُ عِنْدَهُ So this person... His knowledge will no longer have an effect upon the people. His knowledge will no longer have a result that people will take from him and then implement what they have learned. Why? Because 
Yani mala ila dunya, he's turned towards the dunya even though he may be from those people that carry knowledge with them. Here we mention Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullahu ta'ala. He says, فَتَبَيَّنَا أَنَّ مُجَرَّدَ بَقَاءِ حِفْظِ الْكِتَابِ لَا يُوجَبُ هَذَا الْعِلْمِ He said, from this we come to know that just by memorizing a book, yani memorization by itself, does not preserve knowledge. Just because you've memorized something is not the preservation of that knowledge. لا سيما فإن القرآن يقرأه يقرأه المنافق والمؤمن ويقرأه الأما الذي لا يعلم الكتاب إلا الأماني وقد قال الحسن البصري العلم علمان He says especially if we take a look at the Quran يقرأه المنافق the hypocrite can read the Qur'an. Rather, the hypocrite can memorize the Qur'an. He says, وَالْمُؤْمِنُ The believer can read the Qur'an. وَيَقْرَأُهُ الْأَمَى الَّذِي لَا يَعْلَمُ الْكِتَابَ إِلَّا الْأَمَانِ Even the one who is illiterate can read the Qur'an. I've met people. They've memorized portions of the book of Allah Ta'ala and they cannot read or write. But they memorize portions of the book of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. وَقَدْ قَالَ الْحَسَنُ الْبَصَرِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى الْحَسَنُ الْبَصَرِ He says, رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى الْعِلْمُ عِلْمَانِ Knowledge is two types of knowledge. Knowledge is two types of knowledge. عِلْمٌ فِي الْقَلْبِ There is a knowledge which is rooted in the heart. A knowledge which is rooted in the heart. وَعِلْمٌ عَلَى اللِّسَانِ And then there is a knowledge which is rooted upon the tongue. And this is a point I want to stop here for a moment. Right? Many of us, many of us, myself included, we become disoriented with seeking knowledge. We may give it a go. We may give it some time, but when we find there's difficulty in it, we come disoriented. We leave it off. And we say, it's not for me. I can't do this. And to speak quite clearly, if this moment comes upon us, we need to step back and check our intentions. Which one of these two categories of knowledge were we seeking out? Were we seeking out ilmun fil qalb or ilmun ala lisan? Were we seeking out a knowledge which was rooted in the heart? Or were we seeking out a knowledge which was only found upon the tongue? Right? A person they become disoriented. I've been trying to memorize this matan. I've been trying to memorize. Uh, the 30th juz of the Qur'an, Ya yeah, subhanAllah, it's been 9 months, 10 months, I haven't been able to do it, khalas, atrukuhu. Let me leave it. Why? Leave it, why? Why are you memorizing it? Are you memorizing it so the people can say, MashaAllah, qad hafidha juz an min al-Qur'an? Are you memorizing it so the people can say, Oh, MashaAllah, look, he's memorized a juz of the Qur'an. He's memorized two parts of the Qur'an, three parts of the Qur'an. Is that why you're memorizing it? If that's why you're memorizing it, then abandoning the action makes sense. Right? If you're looking for recognition amongst the people, oh subhanAllah, look at him, he memorized this. Allahu Akbar, look, he memorized this matan, he memorized this hadith, he memorized these ahadith. Right? If that's what you're looking for, then abandoning the action makes sense. If you can't memorize Juz Amma in a month or two months or three months, it makes sense to leave it off. Right? 
But if you are memorizing because you want ilmun fil qalb, you want knowledge in the heart, you want knowledge which is present in the heart as a reminder for you on a daily basis as you live your life. And it comes out from your heart to remind you in the moment and to protect you in the moment. Then what care do you have? If it takes you a month, if it takes you a year, or if it takes you 10 years to memorize the Qur'an, or if it takes you 20 years to memorize the Qur'an, what care do you have? Alhamdulillah ta'ala, you're not looking for recognition from the people. What you're looking for is to draw closer to Allah Ta'ala. What you are looking for is to worship Allah Ta'ala upon knowledge. What you are looking for is to protect the religion of Allah Ta'ala for yourself and for your family. He says, Alhamdulillah Ta'ala, He says, فَعِلْمُ الْقَلْبِ هُوَ عِلْمُ النَّافِعِ فَعِلْمُ الْقَلْبِ هُوَ الْعِلْمُ النَّافِعِ The knowledge of the heart is beneficial knowledge. وَعِلْمُ اللِّسَانِ حُجَّةُ اللَّهِ عَلَىٰ عِبَادِهِ And the knowledge of the tongue, this is who? Al-Hasan al-Basari, rahimahullah ta'ala. And he says, the knowledge of the tongue, حُجَّةُ اللَّهِ عَلَىٰ عِبَادِهِ That is the proof of Allah ta'ala upon His servants. And that is the case that will be presented on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. If you say, I didn't know, no, you did know, your tongue knew it. You did not allow it to be established in your heart. You sought out the knowledge of the tongue, you didn't seek out the knowledge of the heart. And Billahi alaykum, the one who understands the difference between these two, the one that understands the difference between these two, the barakah, the blessings they will see in talabul ilm, in the seeking of knowledge cannot be matched by the one who does not understand the difference between the two. The one who understands what is knowledge within the heart is not shy from walking around with a small risala that has written upon it, a durusul muhimma li ammatil ummah. He's not shy that he's walking around with a translation of the book of Sheikh bin Baz saying, what? Uh, important lessons for every Muslim and he's 50 or 60 years old. There's no shyness in him for that. Because he doesn't care what the people think. Until he perfects that book, he does not move on to another book. And he's continuously reading it until he knows it inside and outside. He knows it, yani what's on this page and what's on this page and he's continuously reading it. And continuously reading it and reading it and reading it. This person is making muraja'ah, this person is reviewing, this person wants that knowledge in their heart, they do not suffice that the knowledge is upon their tongue. And as soon as it's upon their tongue, they want to move on to something else. That knowledge which is just upon the tongue is the proof of Allah Ta'ala, is the case that will be presented on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. If someone says, I didn't know, no, your tongue knew. Your tongue, it knew. You place that knowledge upon your tongue. You did not allow it to penetrate the heart. He says, فَإِذَا قَبَبَ اللَّهُ الْعُلِمَاءِ بَقِيَ مَنْ يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنَ بِلَا عِلْمِ Allahu Akbar. He says, if Allah Ta'ala takes the Qur'an, بَقِيَ مَنْ يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنَ بِلَا عِلْمِ There will remain only those people that read the Qur'an without knowledge. It will remain only those people that read the Qur'an without knowledge. It comes in a hadith on Hudayfat ibn al-Yaman marfu'an Collected by Ibn Majah and Al-Hakim and graded to be authentic by Shaykh Nasruddin Al-Albani, Rahimallah Ta'ala. He says, يَدْرُسُ الْإِسْلَامُ كَمَا يَدْرُسُ وَشْيُ الثَّوْبِ That Islam will become uh, 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 faded 
as the embroidery upon clothing becomes comes faded. It will lose, yani, it shine, it will lose that amongst the people. Hatta la yudra ma siyamun wala salatun wala nusukun wala sadaqa. Until there will come a time that a people will not know what is fasting, what is the prayer, what are the rights of hajj, the rights of umrah, wala sadaqa, and what is charity. وَلَا يُسْرَى عَلَى كِتَابِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ فِي لَيْلَةٍ فَلَا يَبْقَى فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْهُ آيَةٍ He says, and the Qur'an will be lifted in a single night. فَلَا يَبْقَى فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْهُ آيَةٌ There will not remain a single verse from it. A single verse from it. فَتَبْقَى طَوَائِفُ مِنَ النَّاسِ الشَّيْخُ الْكَبِيرُ وَالْعَجُوزِ And there will remain groups of people. الشيخ الكبير Old men and old women that will remain. يَقُولُونَ أَدْرَكْنَا آبَاءَنَا عَلَى هَذِهِ الْكَلِمَةِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَنَحْنُ نَقُولُهَا And they will say, we found our forefathers saying this, these words, La ilaha illallah, فَنَحْنُ نَقُولُهَا So we also say those words. And this will be the time that will come in regards to the Qur'an. It's mentioned on the authority of Abu Darda, رضي الله تعالى عنه, قال, قال, كنا مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فشخص ببصره إلى السماء ثم قال هذا أوان يختلس العلم من الناس حتى لا يقدر منه على شيء He said Abu Darda رضي الله تعالى عنه that كنا مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم that we were with the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم فشخص ببصره فشخص ببصره he lifted his eyes to the to the heavens ثم قال هذا أوان يختلس العلم من الناس هل حتى لا يقدر لا يقدر منه على شيء will come a time the people won't be able to find knowledge it will be taken from them they won't be able to find not think of these and we're going to come to some of the benefits in all of these ahadith فقال زياد بن لبيد الانصاري زياد بن لبيد he says كيف يختلس منا وقد قرأنا القرآن how is it that we will be يعني, uh, 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 it will be taken from us or we won't be able to attain it how is that O Messenger of Allah وَقَدْ قَرَأْنَا الْقُرْآنَ And we have read the Qur'an. فَوَاللَّهِ لَنَقْرَأَنَّهُ وَلَنُقْرِأَنَّهُ نِسَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَنَا He said, by Allah, O Messenger of Allah, we shall read the Qur'an. And we shall make our wives and our children read the Qur'an. And we shall make them read the Qur'an. فَقَالَ ثَكِلَتْكَ أُمُّكَ يَا زِيَادِ إِن كُنْتُ لَأَعُدُّكَ مِنْ فُقَهَاءِ أَهْلِ الْمَدِينَةِ He said that I used to believe, I used to count you amongst the fuqaha of Medina. Any of the people of understanding, I, any what is this Ziyad? I used to think you understood. Listen to this statement. هذه التوراة والإنجيل عند اليهود والنصارى. Here is the Torah, the Injil with the Jews and the Christians. فماذا تغني عنهم؟ What has it attained them? In this, some of the scholars they mention, again going back to this point of the raising of knowledge. The raising of knowledge is in two forms. The raising of knowledge is in two forms. Firstly, it is 
the raising of knowledge, yani the removal of knowledge, the death of the scholar. So a scholar, he dies and what he has with him from knowledge goes with him. And there is no one that remained upon the earth that wanted to sit with that person of ilm and take that knowledge. No one wanted to sit in a circle of knowledge. They were busy with dunya. They were busy with money. They were busy with affairs of this life. So they wouldn't sit in the masjid and they wouldn't seek knowledge from the people. And the second going of knowledge, the second uh, departing of knowledge, is departing of the action of knowledge, the understanding of knowledge. So the Qur'an may remain, a hadith may remain, the books may remain, but, but the understanding and the action upon it will not remain. So he says, قَالَ جُبَيْرٌ فَلَقِيتُ عُبَادَ تَبْنِ الصَّامِتِ قُلْتُ أَلَا تَسْمَعُ إِلَى مَا يَقُولُ أَخُوكَ أَبُ الدَّرْضَى Jubair, he said, So I met Ubadah tabn al-Samit, and I said to him, Do you not hear what your brother Abu Darda is saying? فَأَخْبَرْتُهُ بِالَّذِي قَالَ أَبُ الدَّرْضَى I informed him with what Abu Darda was saying. يعني the قول that we just said right now. قَالَ صَدَقَ أَبُ الدَّرْضَى So Ubadah ibn Samit, he said, Abu Darba has spoken the truth. Abu Darba, he has spoken the truth. لَأُحَدِّثَنَّكَ بِأَوَّلِ عِلْمٍ يُرْفَعُ مِنَ النَّاسِ Let me tell you the first knowledge that will be lifted from the people. Al-Khushu'u Al-Khushu'u The attentiveness of the heart, the fear of the heart in the salah. That will be taken away from the people. Yushiku an tadkhula masjid jama'atin. It is possible you shall enter into the masjid, masjid jama'ah, yani the masjid where jama'ah is being offered. Fala tara fihi rajulan khashi'an. And you won't see a single person in there. That is, that is min ahlil khushu' That has khushu' of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. A Shaykh Nasruddin al Albani, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, learn the previous hadith. He says, Hadal al hadith naba'un khatirun. This hadith is naba'un khatir. It is a very yani, dangerous news that we have been given. وَهُوَ أَنَّهُ سَوْفَ يَأْتِي يَوْمٌ عَلَى الْإِسْلَامِ يُمْحَى, يمحى أَثَرُهُ There will come a day in Islam يُمْحَى أَثَرُهُ That the effect, the results of Islam shall be erased. They will be removed. وَعَلَى الْقُرْآنِ فَيُرْفَعُ And the Qur'an shall be raised. فَلَا يَبْقَى مِنْهُ وَلَا آيَةٌ وَاحِدًا And nothing will remain from the Qur'an, not even a single verse. It's a mention that a hadith, that at this time, those that will, at the establishment of the hour, those that remain upon the earth will be the worst of mankind. The worst of people that mankind has ever known. وَذَٰلِكَ لَا يَكُونُ قَطْعًا إِلَّا بَعْدَ أَن يُسَيْطِرُ الْإِسْلَامُ أفواد أَن يُسَيْطِرَ الْإِسْلَامُ عَلَى الْقُرَّةِ الْأَرْضِيَةِ جَمِعِهَا Of course, this will not happen until Islam spreads throughout the entire globe. Yani Islam is dominant entire. Yani everyone enters into Islam. This will not happen until after that happens. وَتَكُونُ كَلِمَتُهُ فِيهَا هِي الْعُلْيَةِ And that the word of Allah Ta'ala will be the uppermost in the land. كَمَا هُوَ نَصُّ قَوْلِ اللَّهِ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينُ الْحَقِّ لِيُظْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ As it is clearly mentioned, 
that Allah Ta'ala, He said, He is the one who sent His Messenger with guidance and the true religion so as to make it the uppermost. يُظْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ To make it uppermost over all of the religions. وَكَمَا شَرَحَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ ذَلِكَ فِي أَحَدِيثٍ كَثِيرَةٍ And as the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم has mentioned that in many ahadith. Shaykh Nasir al-Din, he says, وَمَا رُفِعَ الْقُرْآنُ الْكَرِيمُ فِي آخِرِ الزَّمَانِ إِلَّا تَمْهِيدًا لِإِقَامَةِ السَّاعَةِ عَلَى شَرَارِ الْخَلْقِ The Qur'an at the end of time shall not be raised except as a tamheed. Tamheed, يعني as a precursor. As a precursor, to what? لِإِقَامَةِ سَاعَةِ عَلَى شَرَارِ الْخَلْقِ For the establishment of the hour upon the most evil of mankind. الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْرِفُونَ شَيْئًا مِنَ الْإِسْلَامِ الْبَتَّةِ حَتَّى وَلَا تَوْحِيدًا A people that will not know anything from Islam, nothing from Islam, will remain upon the earth at that time. Go back to the hadith, right? That, what? يُرْفَعُ الْعِلْمُ وَيَنْزِلُ الْجَهْلِ وَيَثْبُتَ الْجَهْلِ وَيَظْهُرَ الْجَهْلِ Knowledge will be taken away. What will remain will only be ignorance. The Qur'an will be taken away. What will remain will only be ignorance. And this will be the time when even those people even those people who said, أَدْرَكْنَا آبَاءَنَا يَقُولُونَ هَذِهِ الْكَلِمَةِ We met our forefathers, we, uh, 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 uh. we met our forefathers and they used to say these words, لَا إِلَهَا إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَنَحْنُ نَقُولُهَا So now we say, even they will no longer be present. Even they will no longer be present. Some of the points of benefit Shaykh Nasir, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, وَفِي الْحَدِيثِ إِشَارَةٌ إِلَىٰ عَظْمَةِ الْقُرْآنِ In this hadith is an indication إِلَىٰ عَظْمَةِ الْقُرْآنِ to the great status of the Qur'an. And this is where we stop. Let me stop here for a moment. We know that the Qur'an is a source of guidance. That the people will be the worst of mankind because they will no longer have the Qur'an to guide them. And Allah Ta'ala, He says, that we have revealed the Qur'an, وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ We are the protectors of the Qur'an. That this is so as guidance remains amongst mankind. That Allah Ta'ala did not do this for any of the previous books. Not the Torah, not the Injil, not the Zabur. Right? None of the books prior to the Qur'an was given this nobility, and it was given the status that Allah Ta'ala is the protector of the book. <coughs> this is for no other reason except that guidance remains upon the earth. Where this guidance is may differ from era to era, from century to century, from place to place. Right? And we find this, we find this throughout the history of Islam, that the centers of knowledge at times were many, at times they were limited to certain, certain places. After the death of the Messenger of Allah والسلام, the Sahaba, they became dispersed to teach the people Islam. To teach the people Islam uh, to go back. I mentioned uh, yesterday the hadith of uh, uh, Abdullah and the hadith of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari and I said it was Abdullah ibn Abbas I was mistaken it was not Abdullah ibn Abbas it was Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu Abdullah ibn Mas'ud as they were all in uh, 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 Kufa I was speaking to uh, Ustad Muhammad Amin al-Jazairi and he had mentioned to me that that was a mistake 
but rather that they were, it was Abdullah ibn Mas'ud because they were all in Kufa together. I mentioned Anas ibn Malik was in Basra. But the Qur'an remains as a source of guidance. So what importance are you and I given to the Qur'an? What importance are you and I given to the Qur'an? The knowledge of the Qur'an, it includes the reading of the Qur'an, the proper reading of the Qur'an, the proper pronunciation, with the science of tajweed, and reading it properly. Included in that is memorization of the Qur'an. Included in that is knowledge of the Arabic language. And understanding the Arabic language. Those of us that have children, those of us that have children, it is possible to raise your children speaking the Arabic language. It is possible. But it requires dedication from us as parents. It requires us to be dedicated to that. It requires us to be parents. Stop with the free time. Stop with the wasting of time. Stop putting devices in their hands. Stop doing that. Let's start educating our children, our children to the Arabic language. Let's start educating them. There's an article I read that Hasidic Jews, full Yani generations of them born in the States and their children speak Hebrew better than they speak English. And the Muslim cannot teach their child the Arabic language. We can't teach our children the Arabic language. We can't give importance to Arabic. We can't we can't commit ourselves to learning the Arabic language. So he says. وَفِي الْحَدِيثِ إِشَارَةٌ إِلَىٰ عَظْمَةِ الْقُرْآنِ وَأَنَّ وُجُودَهُ بَيْنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ هُوَ سَبَبُ لِبَقَاءِ دِينِهِمْ وَرَسُوخُ بُنْيَانِهِمْ He says in that indeed the presence of the Qur'an, the presence of the Qur'an, Amongst the Muslims is a reason for the remaining of their religion, yani for the presence of their religion. If the Quran is present, then it is it is the reason why our religion is still present amongst us. As there will come a time where that effect of Islam will be removed, the book of Allah Ta'ala will be removed and will no longer remain. And for the strength of it of the building of Islam. وَمَا ذَلِكَ إِلَّا بِتَدَارُسِهِ I think I'm pronouncing that word incorrectly. وَتَدَبُّرِهِ وَتَفَهُمِهِ And that is not going to happen except by studying the Qur'an. Except by pondering over the Qur'an. Except by understanding the Qur'an. وَلِذَلِكَ تَأَحَّدَ اللَّهُ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى بِحِفْظِهِ إِلَىٰ أَنْ يَأْذَنَ اللَّهُ بِرَفْعِهِ And that is why Allah Ta'ala has taken the responsibility of protecting the Qur'an until Allah Ta'ala decrees that the Qur'an should be raised. From all of these ahadith, ya ikhwati, the hadith of Abu Darda the hadith of Anas ibn Malik or the hadith of Anas ibn Malik, the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the hadith of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. In all of these ahadith, there is an indication that the worst of times and the worsening of times is paired with what? with the decrease of knowledge. As knowledge decreases, the people become worse. As understanding of Islam decreases, the habits of the people become worse. The customs of the people become worse. Sin increases. As understanding decreases, even though the alfav, even though the words of knowledge may still be present upon the tongues, 
the effect of it decreases upon the people. Knowledge, knowledge is a means of rectification. We live in a time where our very minds are being trained not to gain knowledge, to leave the dabbur, to leave uh, 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 the actions of intelligent people to a select few. And then everyone blindly follow them. Everyone blindly follow. Amongst the Muslims and the non-Muslims. Sheikh Nasir, he mentions it. Uh, uh, we don't have um, enough time to go through those affairs. But be from those that give importance to gaining knowledge and understanding knowledge. For the preservation of your own self, for the preservation of your own religion, for the preservation of your religion amongst your children. There is a price to be paid. There is a price to be paid. We have become numb. Brothers and sisters, listen to this. We have become numb. Right? To the effect of living in this society, we become numb to it. Do you think that your sons and daughters, as they're driving through the streets with you, do not see the billboards? Do you think that they don't notice what's on the billboards? They don't see the ads, huh? With alcohol being sold? You don't think they see the ads of, you know, get tested for AIDS because you are both gay and you want to get tested for each other, husband for husband? You think they don't see that? And you don't think that as we continue to drive them through these streets and go to the malls and they see this thing, you don't think that that's going to normalize in their brains? That this is normal activity? You don't think that when they walk in into a store and they see the pictures of women in scarce dressing, you don't think their eyes turn? You don't think that we are, without saying anything, instilling in the minds of our daughters that this is what they should look like? Because this is the woman that is respected? You don't think we're doing this? Your children, along with ourselves, are being bombarded with ideas that are meant to decrease their religiosity. They are meant, they are meant to fade away their religion. They're introducing classes now, public schools, they're introducing these classes now, right? Called 21st century learnings. What is 21st century learnings? Learnings of what we found, we have come to realize in the 21st century mistakes that we made in that 20th century. Part of this is what? Transitioning, teaching children in schools, it is okay. Yani, if you start school, share with us your pronouns. And if in the middle of the school year, you want to change your pronouns, you don't have to tell your parents. They can't, a student cannot take an Advil or a Tylenol at school without the permission of their parent, but they can change the sex that they claim to be without the permission of the parent. So do you really believe, do you really believe that living here, that living here is not affecting our children? It's not affecting us. This knowledge which is being taught 
in masajid, salafi masajid. And billahi alaykum, billahi alaykum, uqsumu billahi. It is not being taught in any other masajid other than the Salafi masjid. I challenge you to go and find a masjid where the books of aqidah and the books of fiqh and all of these books, all of these other masajid are now becoming social institutions. Everything is just social sciences. Right? Everything is, let's give you a pill so as to fix the problem later on. But let's not do anything to solve the problem from ever occurring. So this ilm, these books, the memorization of the Qur'an, it is key, it is key to safeguarding ourselves, to safeguarding our children. The hadith of Abu Hurairah, رضي الله تعالى عنه Collected by Imam Muslim Very famous hadith The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He said إِذَا مَاتَ الْإِنسَانُ إِنْ قَتَعَ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ A person dies They die All of their actions are cut off إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثٍ Except from three affairs Sadaqatun jariya yantafi'u bihi A sadaqa, charity that they give the people continue to benefit from Ilmun yantafi'u bihi Knowledge that they leave behind the people continue to benefit from Wa waladun salih yad'u lahu And a righteous child that makes dua for them If we believe that after we leave this life and we are in our barzakh, we are in our qabr, we are going to be in need of people to make dua for us. We are going to need someone that says, Allah yarhamu. May Allah Ta'ala have mercy upon them. Allahumma ghfir lahum. Oh Allah, forgive them. If we believe that that is a need, and ask yourselves this, ask yourselves this, if we truly believe that is going to be a need that we have, then we cannot fail our children in giving them knowledge of their religion, and establishing it in their hearts, and aiding them in practicing their religion, and pointing out what is right and what is wrong, and safeguarding them, from where we are. And this goes wherever we may be, whether you are in the lands of disbelief or in the lands of Islam. But no doubt, no doubt that some places are worse than others. There's no doubt about this. So we'll stop here bi ta'ala. May Allah ta'ala give us tawfiq in implementing what we have learned. May Allah ta'ala reward our brothers at Masjid ibn Baz for allowing us to uh, uh, allowing us to meet, allowing us to benefit from each other. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala adihi wa ashabihi wa man taba'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm ad-deen. Allahu yubarik fikum wa yadzikum khairah.